to the gym when you're on the farm, you just got hurdles there. Oh, lovely. Lovely job. Oh, okay, they're going to go under. Fair enough. They want to go under. I'm not going to be complaining. Right, a farmer's life for me. Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, you can click the subscribe button down below and you can also as well tap the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified when there's a new episode from Molly's Farm. It's about 20 to eight this morning, just gone half past seven, and we're just on the farm to feed the calves. So there's the calves just over there, and I thought today I'd take you along uh, at, and another day in the life of Ollie, what I'm up to at the moment. A lot of you guys have been asking me about it in the comments, and just got some milk here. I pre pre mixed up this morning. I need to add some more uh, cold water to that. My whisk has broken actually. <laughs> just add some cold water to just to just bring the temperature down a bit for the calves. So the, the milk's just literally lukewarm. And whilst that milk is just cooling down, I'm just going to set up the manatee to warm her up this morning. Oh. The lights on. So we're just going to warm the manatee up and then we'll be going out on that in a bit. So these are some new calves which we've had in for the last couple of weeks and uh, you can see they want a bit of their milk this morning. They're almost on hard food but they do still need a bit of milk unfortunately so uh, until we can get them weaned off they're going to need milk for a little while longer yet. So I've just got to get some of these into their pens, get them their milk and then uh, we'll be well away. Blimey, that's six uh, put in anyway, and I'm gonna get them their milk trough after I've fed these ones just here. So, so a couple. Just need something now. Come on. <laughs> this is just a game. You've got to get each one onto their teeth. You can see they're strong. If you just look at this one here, number 722. Very strong little calf, that one. Right, so these have just had their milk. And as you can, as you can see, their milk's just been drunk out of there. And I've just got to do the other six in this pen. And then uh, once I've fed them, I can then go and get on with the other jobs on the farm, feeding the rest of the cattle. Okay, so calves fed and on to the next job. Which is feeding all of the other cattle on the farm. And am I gonna get through there? Emptying the horse muck this morning. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get through this gap. Ooh, slim manatee, eh? Skinny, skinny. Oh, don't hit the mirror. Oh. So we've gone another way and uh, filled up, F filled up a fuel last night that managed to, so we're good for fuel.
just uh, fed the calves this morning and we just emptied the horse muck there, scraped up the yard around the back and I've just got the canam here with the feed buckets on. This is what I use to feed the calves around the back, the young Belgian blue stores, some of the bigger ones. And I just fill the buckets up with barley and some nuts. So that's my next job. Hey. See, we've got a crack in the windscreen. Need to get that fixed, but I might get another one or a, a John Deere Gator or something else soon, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Everything's taken about a million years at the moment. To happen. over here which are currently covering the Johnson Brothers trailer backs anyway so I just put three buckets of this lovely barley which is rolled barley rolled it earlier in the year with the the feed mill company so this is homegrown so it's the barley which was grown on the farm so it gets very dusty it's one thing the coronavirus mask comes in handy for while I'm on the farm <laughs> So I'm just putting the last few buckets in the bag that, in the back of the can am then. I don't know if you guys can pick it up on camera, but there's some geese there which are just flying over the broads this morning. Canadian pink-footed geese, I believe. And uh, they've been making quite a noise this morning. Hmm, I don't know what's happened to the GoPro. It seems to have picked up some condensation there. So did the Manitou and the can am as well was fogging up this morning. Don't know if you guys can pick that up. Apologies for that. All right. Yesterday, so I'll give them some more straw out later on today. So. Anyway, they're happy. Still more geese flying over. And here are the calves earlier. You see, they're all pretty much lying down, chilled out. And they've just been eating a bit of their food, but a few of their pellets, which I put down for them. Still got loads of condensation on the camera. But yeah, nice to see they're doing well. And yeah, it's always a good sign of, with animals when, they, when they're lying down after you fed them, that they're content, that they're happy, that they're in good health, healthy condition. So I'm on the turnip field now. And for those of you guys who remembered, um, this is the field where we stacked the bales earlier on in harvest where we stacked these bales with the John Deere 61555R and the front loader and uh, who would have thought we'd have been coming back with a little manatee an MLT 630V so just going to pick up a few bales here because what we've been doing is coming in picking them up and we're using them for feed straw on the farm so we're feeding some of the red poles the young Belgian blues with the barley bales they're a little bit damaged in places from the rain unfortunately and um, but once you get this core off it's good eating straw underneath there so that's what we're after above all is that good eating straw to keep the cattle going to give them some roughage in the winter and um, you know it's very important this sort of straw so that's why we keep it away from the other stack because if the main stack went down at the farm we wouldn't have any eating straw to feed the cattle so very very important this straw <laughs>
found a way to rub against this uh, peg here. Whether they're just probably rubbing against it and then it just comes loose. So maybe I could put like put something in between here, a little bolt or something, just to stop them from doing that tonight. It's a bit annoying. I can't shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Okay, let's get rid of that straw. That's done. There we go. So, so I just need to find something. Just to lodge in there. Other than that, pretty good tray though. Does the job. Keep a little tea bag in here somewhere. There we go. Nice bit of green tea there. And a little crunchy oat bar. Oh, I get some hot water. Take my hat off. It's quite quite a good little hat this actually. It's just a little snap on one. I was given it when I was 16, when I was on work experience at uh, Ben Burgess in Norwich at the John Deere dealership. And uh, there was a snap-on truck, and the salesman gave, gave me this hat. And yeah, I've, I've had this since from when I was about 16. Uh, 24 now. How did that happen? <laughs> you wouldn't have thought I looked 24, but I'm 24. Uh, got ID'd the other day for a Sainsbury's home delivery. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just an old part of life, growing up, getting older. Even though 24 is still pretty young, really. Uh, so don't have to worry too much. Not yet, anyway. Hmm. So here's the deer, and uh, the other day we got the sheep in down at the marshes. We brought them all home, and the John Deere got very dirty. I don't know if you guys checked out my Instagram story on that day. Um, it, was <laughs> it was quite a bit of fun. I should have filmed it for you guys on YouTube here, uh, but I didn't because I was so busy trying to get them in with dad and set up all of the pens. Anyway, uh, we've got the sheep home and they're all out now on the back pastures, but the John Deere was filthy inside and out. I hadn't washed it for a good couple of months. So I, I did give it a good clean the other day. I still need to get later on this year or starting out next year, a top chrome exhaust, which would be very nice. So maybe Tumble, if you're watching from AgriLine, maybe you guys could sort me out with a chrome exhaust. That would be quite a nice touch, especially when we start doing some contracting for other farmers as well, that would be a nice thing to do. And then also as well, I would like to get a front PTO fitted. Unfortunately, in this year's budget, we've kind of blown it on that thing over there, the Manitou, um, but certainly moving into next year, we'll now be able to uh, sort of move ahead and, and get that little PTO, which will be handy. And the fodder beat bucket still hasn't gone in yet. I did ring up Henry from Ernest Doe. So Henry, if you're watching, Come and pick up the bucket, come and get the bracket sorted and uh, then we can go and do some contracting with the John Deere for the neighbour. So all going well, uh, I've just got to head around the back and just uh, put the lock on the feed trailer. Right, let's just see if we can get the, uh... oh, oh, oh. let's just see if we can get a little nut and bolt for that door, maybe a latch. This bench is so messy today, that's uh, from my bike, I wore, wore the gears out the other day on it. So, hang on a sec, let's have a look. Maybe something like that size would be quite good with a nut like that, that would do. A clip would also probably do the job, but I just don't want the cows getting through or breaking their way through. I don't know if I've got maybe a pin or something I could use instead. A little leech, leech pin or something, that's quite a big leech pin, that's almost too big though really. And lynch pins, they're almost, they're too good for the feed trailer. There's the geese, they're, they're just waiting for their barley, I'll give that to them in a bit. And uh, here we go, maybe this will just solve the problem, so if I put that through there. There we go. Now. Hopefully they can't get through that now. <coughs> Lovely job. Oh, look at that. Little bit of barley. Lovely old job. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Here they come. Come on. Come on, look. Kick, 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 Ha, ha, ha.
Okay, so hopefully you guys can see I let the cows out earlier and they're just eating their hay. There's the stores just to the left and then we're just scanning the Shropshire ewes this afternoon and we'll go and have a look in a bit at the store lambs just over there. So we'll go and have a look at those in just a sec uh, once we find out the results of the scanning. The Shropshires have just been scanned. So, just gonna... Yeah, I've been so busy today, I forgot to tell you guys that we were having the Shropshire sheep scanned, doing all sorts of things. Feeding the calves, feeding the cows, bedding everything up, mucking out, scraping out, filling the machines up with fuel, maintenance, doing these videos, editing the videos. <laughs> it's just not enough hours in the day. Right, if all goes well, I've done this properly. I'm hoping, with a little bit of luck, the Shropshires will run around that gate. Okay, here we go. Steady, steady. So there they are, they're all in lamb, the Shropshires. Oh no, the gate's shut. Oh, okay, they're gonna go under, fair enough. They wanna go under. I'm not gonna be complaining. Right. It's all a bit of fun, isn't it? There we go. A farmer's life for me. Yeah, I wouldn't want it any other way. Right. So we're just going to put them out now on the back park so that they can graze off the grass on there over the west of winter and then we'll bring them in uh, later on next year in the springtime for lambing. So off they go. You don't need to go to the gym when you're on the farm, you've just got hurdles there. Oh, lovely. Okay, so I'm just on the nine acres field here. This field was drilled with grass earlier on in the year in about September time. And as you can see, the, the grass has started to come up. We've just got the sheep behind us here because Dad and I fenced this field in the other day, just along that edge there. And we put the sheep on here to just graze the grass down, to tighten it up, to put some manure on it on here, some muck, and also as well to level out the areas which have been a bit wet. So they've done a really good job of that so far. I hope you guys can pick it up on camera. And later on next year, in the spring, we'll hopefully make some silage off this. Late spring, May time, hopefully, sort of summer time, we'll, we'll start making some silage or some hay, depending on uh, what the the, uh, the weather is doing. So I'm just coming on here to just check them to make sure they're okay and uh, to make sure nothing has gotten out. So that's the only trouble when you use electric fencing. You have to check the fence all the time, check the stock numbers and make sure everything's okay. Uh, this particular grass is a long-term lay. So this is gonna be a grass field for a, quite a period of time. And as you can see, just looking down below, in the mix, there is quite a bit of clover. Clover is a good thing because it fixates uh, nitrogen from the air and that is very important for low fertilizer costs. Sheep like uh, legumes such as uh, clover anyway and it does them a lot of good and gra grazing this field down will, will do them an awful lot of good. You can just see the indents here from where we rolled it in um, unfortunately there, is, there was quite a bit of compaction with the rolling um, but the sheep will deal with that they will level this field out and before, before long we'll have a nice crop of silage off this field. It's only nine acres um, but we'll go for a big yield. <laughs> Hopefully we can get quite a few bales off here. Sort of the sheep out Good calves. Whoa. <laughs> Wave it. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, so another day almost over and done with, and the manatee has been doing a lovely, lovely job. So we've fed the cows, we've made sure everything is in good condition, good health, good order fed everything. Uh, later on the, in the week we've got to remove some of the muck in the yard which is built up, bring in some more straw and I'm planning on doing that by taking off the cattle float and putting the Johnson Brothers trailer over to a flatbed trailer. I can do that by taking the box off and putting those, those back ladders on which you guys saw uh, earlier on in today's video. The John Deere as well, we didn't use it today because the John Deere put the fodder beat out yesterday twice so all I had to do was move the cattle over and then uh, I didn't have to uh, feed them out today so I've just been able to feed them for two days with one run if you know what I mean. So very soon we'll get this fodder beet bucket sorted out 
get those brackets taken off, take the front loader off, we'll put it in the shed, and we'll try and get a front loader or a Manitou uh, headstock to go on the front loader, front loader to Manitou, so that we can then use the Manitou attachments on the front loader. So that's the plan with that one. There's lots going on, as I'm sure you guys uh, have, have been seeing today. It's very, very busy working on a farm, especially a mixed farm in winter time when we've got all of the cattle in and, uh, we, and we've got arable work to do as well. And you know, the John Deere uh, contracting work, which we're starting to do for other farmers as well. So, you know, very, very busy, which is just how we operate. It's just how the farm goes. Over there, just waiting for a dinner. Um, but you know, it's, it's a good thing to, to be busy, especially in times like this, I think. Um, so yeah, maybe for you guys out there, uh, keep, keep yourselves occupied, keep yourselves busy, and uh, give yourself something to get up to in the morning. Uh, everybody needs a sense of purpose uh, in life. That's what I believe anyway. And uh, as long as you've got that sense of purpose, you'll be okay. So, uh, I mean, farming, it's not for everyone. It is a way of life. It's difficult. It's hard. You're not going to make a lot of money. Um, but as I said, you know, as I can hopefully convey to you guys on these videos, it's all about the lifestyle um, which goes with, with the farming, if that makes sense. So, and uh, I believe as well, there is a, an old saying that if you uh, do what you're passionate about, do what you enjoy and uh, do it well, uh, you'll be successful. So, um, you know, just something to, to maybe live by there. Um, so I'm just gonna feed Clover, take, help just take her out for a walk before I do that. I fuel up the, the rest of the machines, make sure there's enough fuel in the Can-Am and the Manitou for tomorrow. And uh, then we will be uh, going on to, to a new day tomorrow. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. It really does make a difference if you just click, click the thumbs up button, makes a big, big difference. And also as well, you can click the subscribe button if you haven't already down below. Totally free to subscribe, it doesn't cost you guys anything. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, whatever you've been up to, and I will catch you on the next one.